In this video, I'm going to be reviewing the new Fox Stepcast fork. I've used what Fox now calls the standard chassis for years. I've probably had a dozen or more cross-country 32 millimeter stanchion forks in the regular chassis. So this is my first Stepcast fork, so I'm really excited about trying this. And this fork is designed to be lighter than previous chassis. And they've done that by narrowing the fork a little bit and trimming some material down here. And they say they maintain the same ride quality in the upper. So that's the main thing that I'm curious about these forks is making sure they ride like the previous Fox forks, which I love the way they ride. And I really like the improvements they've made over the last couple years, uh, particularly with the new Fit4 damper and the volume spacers. You can change the air spring rate by adding or removing volume spacers and it's very easy to do it takes about five minutes and i like taking out volume spacers because i like the mid stroke to be a little bit more sensitive and it makes it easier to get full travel on the fork now this is the performance series uh, i'm sorry this is the factory series the performance series is a grade lower the factory series is the higher end version with the kashima coating so this uh, is the 29er version. It's got the 15 millimeter QR tapered steer and it is going on the Niner RKT9 that you see there in the background. And uh, again, this is the first step cast that I've used. So I'm going to show you the weight of this because it's about a half pound lighter than the previous 32 millimeter forks. And by the way, you may or may not know, you can only get these in 100 millimeters of travel. So this is a cross country fork. 100 millimeters of travel, 32 millimeter stanchions. That's the width of this stanchion. So um, will they come out with a 120 later on? Perhaps, that'd be kind of cool. But for right now, you can only get these in 100. So let me show the weight of this fork. So this is coming in about 3.1, 3.11 pounds. And I'm weighing this with an uncut steer tube with no crown race and with no star nut installed. So I'm going to go ahead and measure this for my bike, cut down the steer tube, install the crown race and the star nut, and I'll get another weight and show you how it weighs with that. And by the way, I am weighing it with the axle. So Fox says that these come in under three pounds. So Obviously, this is going to be without the axle. So let me uh, let me let me do some uh, cutting on this, and I'll show the show you the weight after I cut down the steerer tube. All right. So with the steerer tube cut, crown race installed, and actually I don't have a star nut in there. I'm just weighing it without it because this one actually comes with a different kind of top cap. It's actually one for carbon. So anyway, let me. Uh, let me take the axle out and we'll get a, a, a weight without the axle. So without the axle, we get 2.93. That's light. All right, just for the heck of it, I put in the uh, the, the cap. And this is uh, the top cap. It, it's I, I, I like this a lot better than having to just bang in a star nut. Th these are actually made for carbon uh, steerer tubes, but this is an aluminum. But I'm kind of glad Niner included that. Anyway, so I've got the axle and that cap, which probably weighs about as much of a, as a star nut. So with all that, we get 3.17. So that cap didn't add much at all. So there you go. I'll call that the, the full fork weight, 3.17 with the axle, with the crown race installed, steerer tube cut down, and the top cap, which it looks like I need to straighten out a little bit. So there you go, 3.17 pounds. Now let's get it on the bike and see how it rides. So I spent a month and a half of riding the new Fox Stepcast fork. One of my main concerns before I started riding the fork was would the performance be as good as the standard chassis, particularly in the stiffness category. And the good news after a month and a half is I can say that this fork performs just as well as the standard chassis by dropping half a pound of weight, which is a great thing. And that's kind of the evolution we've seen in mountain biking over the past few years. Bikes and components have gotten lighter, but also stiffer. There's a few things that make that happen. I had already mentioned at the beginning of the video that the fork is narrow. This fork is 10 millimeters narrower 
than the regular standard chassis. And what that does is it decreases the torque that's put on the fork, so it allows it to not flex as much laterally. Also, we've seen wider axles in mountain bikes, and this is no exception. So this runs a 110 axle as opposed to 100. That also helps the stiffness, and not related specifically to the fork, but the carbon wheels really help too. Carbon wheels are not only lighter than a regular wheel, regular aluminum wheel, but also they are stiffer and more precise. So all of these come together to help this bike, this fork, ride just as well, just as precise as the standard chassis, but again, dropping the weight. So I want to talk just a minute about some of the features of this fork, especially for those of you who are not too familiar with Fox forks. So let me show them up close here. So the compression settings on the right side go from fully locked out in that position to kind of a middle setting to an open setting. And then you can use the black knob in the middle to adjust the open setting. So going counterclockwise will make it less firm and going clockwise will make it more firm. I typically will ride with it in the middle setting. If I'm on a, an extended downhill, I'll open it up. And then I only use the lockout setting if I'm on the road. I don't reach down and adjust this much on the trail. So it's kind of a set it and forget it right there in the middle. It'll still bob if you're out of the saddle, even in the middle setting. And again, that setting is completely locked out. There is no motion at all. So on the left side is the spring, and this is your air cap. So you would remove that and add your air pressure in order to make your spring stiffer or more compliant. And you would adjust that based on sag, based on your weight. And of course it has the O-ring that you would use. And I usually run about 15 millimeters of sag on this fork. One of the best changes Fox has made in their forks in recent years is the ability to add or remove these volume spacers. And these link together, so this is what they look like. And this fork comes, I believe, with two. I took out one. And what that does is it makes the fork more compliant. It makes the mid-stroke more sensitive and it makes it easier to attain full travel. Uh, it also makes the fork more small bump sensitive. Some people have argued with me on that, but it's really true. In my area that I ride, I have a lot of smaller hits, so a lot of roots. I don't have the big hits that you would get riding up in the high mountains. So if you have more frequent hits that are smaller, you can take these volume spacers out and allow the fork to be more sensitive. If you do a lot of jumping and take big hits, you probably want to add these so that the fork will ramp up a little bit quicker and so you don't bottom the fork out. Just to note that this fork is only available in a 27.5 and 29 version. There is no 26 option available. Also, it's only available right now in 100. One of the ways that Fox has reduced the weight and I don't think I mentioned this at the beginning of the video, but they've shortened the stanchion tube. So instead of the stanchion tubes going all the way down to the bottom of, of the fork, they end right here and there's a little step in the fork, which is why they call it a step cast. And that's allowed the fork to be lighter as well. It would be cool if they made this in a 120. I don't know if engineering wise that's possible with the shorter stanchion tube. So we'll see in the future. Now the only concern I have about this fork. Now this fork is the best cross country fork I have ever ridden in terms of weight and performance. But the only concern that I have is maintenance. So I like changing my own oil. I'm not keen on sending my fork back to Fox just for an oil change. I typically will change the oil yeah, about every four months of riding. And the bolt that you access, or the nut I should say, is pretty far up inside there. And I don't know if you can see in the video there, but it is way up inside there. I have an extension on my socket set so I can reach it. But if you get a uh, crush washer stuck up there or something like that, uh, you know, t I haven't done it yet. And as of yet, I can't find any service procedures on Fox's website, which I use sometimes to reference, especially with a new kind of fork like this. So I haven't seen those. So I'll probably contact, fork, contact Fox about those and try to uh, get those before I do the, the maintenance. Also the rebound knob, I don't even know how to get it off. So it's, it also extends way up inside uh, the bottom of the fork. And so it's gonna be interesting to see. 
uh, I will post a maintenance procedure on how to do this if I'm successful. So you'll know that. And I'll, I'll follow up this review with a long-term report of the fork. And that's definitely something that I'll report on when I do that review. So the question about maintenance is the only negative thing I could say about this fork. And it may not even be a negative. Again, I'll follow it up and let you know. This fork attains perfection by maintaining an awesome ride quality with reducing the weight. So this is a fork that I just, I'm so glad Fox has engineered it like this because it's just a pleasure to ride. And lightening up the front of a bike really makes a difference, especially if you loft the front wheel over roots and logs and things like that, and just makes it feel quicker in the steering department. So that'll wrap it up for this review. As always, any questions or comments that you have, leave them below. And if you've done maintenance on this fork, let us know how it went. Thanks for watching.